Being the history buff that he was, James was aware that the landing at Normandy turned the tide of the Second World War. It may seem to us that these events were a long ways away from the downtown east side, but they, were, they very much affected life back here in Canada. Huge numbers of personnel and material resources were poured into the war effort. In some ways, we are still feeling the impact. The two guys at the front of the panel, these two guys here, here and here, are based on my father and his brother, uh, who in fact were not at Normandy, but they did serve uh, overseas along with another brother. And uh, my uncle here is uh, one of the young men that's buried in a military cemetery in Europe. Um, and my father and his other brother uh, were spiritually scarred by what happened while they were over there. Thank you. Okay, um, Bunker, 1945, not the year, not the month, not the day, not the hour, not the minute, not the second, but the exact moment of Hitler's suicide. Hiroshima, 1945, 8.15 a.m., August the 6th, 120,000 people vaporized. Yeah, I probably have a lot of stories I could tell you about James. Um, but um, I think uh, what I, I guess what I'd like to say about him and what I what I um, what I really appreciated about him was we started this thing. You know, I gave him this canvas and and um, going to chronicle last hundred years. Most of the mural projects that I work on, every single one of them, it's been lots of people, lots of hands, and uh, he just took it on and he took it home, and he made it his, and uh, and to me that's what, if that's that's, you know, he, um, it's one of the things that kind of bugs me a little bit about all the projects that happen in the neighborhood is they don't actually even belong to anybody really. They seem to sort of belong to everybody and there's there's just um, there's just something really beautiful about the fact that he he made this completely his. But it's it's for the whole community and it's but I'm, I'm not saying this very well. <laughs> but uh, I'm just I'm amazed that he was still working on it because we actually Un unrolled it and 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 showed it uh, in November of 2003 for the opening of the Heart of the City play, and at that point I I thought it was done, <laughs> but he just kept going, and I used to joke with him that he slept with it because it just it never left him, and uh, I'm I'm glad I was a part of it. I am Carolyn Wong. Uh, this is Smiling Buddha Cabaret, 1953, a night on the town, Hastings Street, and a walk over to Pender Street for some Chinese food. And the Royal Cafe, 1955. One of the few restaurants where you could go for Chinese food, a cup of coffee, and a slice of apple pie, Pender Street. So uh, it was uh, an honor to read these two panels. Um, my family uh, lived in Chinatown in the 20s, 30s, and on. And um, in 1953, my dad was uh, 20 years old, and these were his stomping grounds. And he remembers the Smiling Buddha uh, Cabaret. He said it was a, a dark nightclub that served uh, liquor illegally because only the hotels uh, were able to have liquor licenses. And he remembers they played uh, live music of popular music of the 1940s and 50s. 
And he also remembers all of the uh, Hong Kong style cafes in the neighborhood, which uh, the BC Royal and they had more than just the one on Pender Street, but uh, it was a place that these places were all really busy and uh, they served a mixture of chow mein and steaks and all kinds of Western and Chinese food. And my dad will tell me about uh, what the neighborhood was like then and how busy the streets were and and how lively they were uh, up until 2 a.m. and that it was uh, um, just really uh, the center of the city at that, uh, at that time. And uh, um, I guess I met James um, in 2008 and uh, he was always, it was always lovely to uh, bump into him um, in the streets or at the office, and uh, he he would almost always uh, have something to say about the mural that he was working on, and I will always remember the twinkle in his eye. Hi, my name is Coco, and I'm totally thrilled to be here, and thank you, Sarah, for this day. Um, this is Pigeon Park, 1957, in the morning, some people feeling good, some of the people feeling god-awful, <clears throat> and um, I must say, things haven't changed much. <laughs> uh, the next panel is Another Saturday Night, 1960, same old thing, Another Saturday Night coming to its logical conclusion on Hastings, with a... Uh, you know, focused arrest there. Again, these three panels, uh, there's some continuity here because not much has changed. Um, and Chinese New Year, 1963. In this panel, the world's Happy New Year appear in Chinese between exploding firecrackers. Um, his incredible ability to bring community together is what I'm really thankful for. Um, and just looking around this room, jeez, uh, almost everybody looks familiar to me in one way or another I've seen you before so I'm just really thankful that you're all here and uh, that James brought us all together. Thanks. Now I'm not sure if you can hear me. <laughs> uh, well, uh, got uh, Bob being busted. <laughs> now this is uh, Jim's brother, Bob Cumming, and uh, he was the chief editorialist of the Georgia Strait when the Georgia Strait was an anti-establishment paper. Does anybody here remember that time? Oh, great, great. <laughs> because it has mellowed a lot over the years. <laughs> Which might be a good thing. But at that time, it was quite exciting. Uh, they broke uh, into the Georgia Strait once a week and arrested uh, Bob and Dan Cloud, who was the founder of uh, the Georgia Strait. And they just really tried to print the truth and uh, peace, flower, children, peace, love, that was the time that it was. And uh, so we see Bob being taken away once again. We go on to the Lux Theater. Now really, I tried to research the Lux, and the main thing is it was there over all the years, and uh, its pink marquee was bright and cheerful, and it was there for 10 cents a movie at the beginning, built in 1939, and it did fall into just disrepair. Now it's that uh, lot is the Lux Hotel. So uh, it's the Lux Theater in 1968. The sidewalk was BC Collateral, the White Lunch, the Lux Theater, the Furniture Spot, the Dobson Hotel. The Lux was ripped out and lay as a vacant spot for years before becoming what is now the Lux Hotel. Then we have the Save the Whales. But in fact, the, in 1971, the United States was going to blow a nuclear bomb underground at Amchipka off the Aleutian Islands. And that's really where Greenpeace was born. 
And then the most important uh, work they did later was to save the whales. But at this time, uh, Greenpeace, it must have taken a lot of courage for people that were not really used to the northern Pacific oceans to climb on an old fish boat, the Phyllis Cormac, and go all the way to Alaska when they knew that a nuclear bomb that is the largest one to date was going to be exploded in the area. And they went right in, causing Richard Nixon to cancel the bombing. But he waited a little longer, and it was carried out. Thank you.